Hey, this is Chris. I wanted to do a quick video about how to load film into the Kony Omega rangefinder cameras. I used to have a video up about how to do this years ago, and it didn't get that many views, so eventually I kind of took it down. But I saw somebody the other day, one of the photographers I follow, who had messed up a bunch of pictures in a Kony Omega that they didn't quite know how to load, and it's perfectly understandable because they're very awkward little cameras to load if you don't know, if you're not familiar with kind of how they work. So I thought, now yeah, I'll go ahead and, and do the video again and and put it back up uh, in case people need it. So and with more and more people kind of looking at some of the medium format cameras now. Um, you know, things like Kony Omegas may sort of come back in onto the scene a little bit more than they, than they were for a while. So I've actually used Kony Omega cameras for, geez, almost 30 years now. I've got a couple of these. Mine are the earlier ones, the Kony Omega Rapid. The back on the cameras that I have is the simpler style back that is not changeable mid-roll. The other cameras, some of the later cameras, had a sort of a casting that the back attaches to that then goes in the camera where you can take the whole the whole uh, assembly out with a dark slide in it to change the, the film mid-roll. Mine isn't that way, but the actual loading mechanism, I, I believe it's exactly the same, so I want to go over how that works. We'll talk about the camera maybe in another video or something if there's enough interest, but um, for, for those people trying to load one of these, let's, let's go over how to load it. So there's a couple of things to keep in mind with loading film in the Kony Omega rangefinder cameras. The back on this camera basically has two functions to the winding lever that comes out the side over here. Uh, it's got the big winding sort of, I guess it's a lever, the, the, the knob that comes out the side. This knob does, does, sort of has two actions to it. If we take this knob and we only pull it out part way, we don't go all the way out to the end, we just do little partial pulls, it winds the film, but it does not trip the counter. To trip the counter, what we have to do is go all the way to the end. I don't want to do that right now because I'm where I want to be. But if I go clunk at the end, it will trip the counter to the next mark. Now, where I want to load this thing is on load. It says load right in my window right now. You can't see it. That little window says load in there. I want to put the film in this camera and I want to advance it to the start arrow, which is typical for 120 film, but I do not want to move that counter. So how do I do that? I don't pull the winding lever all the way to the end and back. I'm just going to use a little partial pull. I can do this all day long and that counter is not moving. If I clunk it to the end, it's going to, it's going to move to the next mark. So let's grab an old roll of film and go over how that works. Okay, so the backs on these cameras this is my back. The has a little, little thing you turn. It's not even a quarter of a turn to take it off on the back, a little, little uh, uh, tab that sticks out. Now, like I said, if I do a little partial pulls on this lever, not going to hit the counter. If I clunk it to the end, it's going to hit the counter. So this says load. I'm going to see if I can film that load. I want it to keep saying that until I'm ready to put this on the camera. Okay. So I don't want to go all the way to the end of the travel. So let me grab my very old roll of film here. And we're going to put this in. This, this camera is actually fairly simple. It just winds across the flat of the camera and then on. So we're just going to put, we're just going to take I'll do that again so you can see. I'm just going to take this spool of film, put it in there. I'm going to pull it across. This one's, this, this is an old roll of film that's been like in every camera imaginable. What we're going to do, <laughs> all over the place here, we're going to come over here and stick it through our tab there. This is going to be an unruly roll of film here. So what I need to do now is I need my, my start arrow to line up. My red mark is over here on this end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start pulling little short pulls, except when the tab comes out. That's the problem this one's going to have. So I'm going to start the film in here, regular way for a camera, roll it around, make sure that my film starts rolling. Now I'm going to keep an eye out for my start arrow to line up over here. We don't want to go past the start arrow over here because we've got a lot of leader exposed before we even get to our start arrow. So we don't want to pull it much further, but we're going to start getting film out of there. So what I want to do now, I'm still on load, and I need my start arrow over here. So what I'm going to do are little short pulls like this. My start arrow just disappeared behind the spool. I need to wait for it to come up over here like this. Little short pulls like that so that I'm not hitting my counter. There's my start arrow, okay, lined up with the red mark. Now I'm still on load and my film is at, the, is at the start arrow. Now comes the second important part. Let me move the camera back in here. Now what we're going to do is when we put this on the camera and we lock it down like that, I'm on load 
and my film is at the start mark. Now something very important happens. Like I said, if we do little partial pulls, we're going to wind the film, but we're not going to trip the counter. Now that we have this back on the camera, we do not ever want to do that. What we want to do now that we want to seriously wind this and have the counter work is we want to go all the way to the end, all the way back in. I'm on one dot now. All the way out, all the way in. Two dots. The next one's going to read number one. Boom. Number one. Okay. Now, what that's done is it just wowed me to exposure number one, and my sequencing, my spacing is correct, okay? And as I wind through this, no idea what shutter speed I have on here, I'm at number two. So let me move this in a little bit here so you can see. Always go all the way to the end, all the way back in, because we're only hitting that counter at the very end of our travel, okay? In fact, if I go slow, I can see I don't hit the counter until right there way at the end boom just that last little you know 10 percent of travel is what trips that counter to number four so like i said this is an old roll of film so don't feel bad now when i get to six what's going to happen is i believe it was six it doesn't go back in quite as far the reason it's not going to go back in quite as far is because on 120 cameras all of them they do this sneaky little thing that you don't realize but the spool of film is starting out large on one side and is skinny on the other. So as you roll off of one spool, the diameter is a certain amount. And when it rolls onto the other spool, that spool is actually spinning further to take up that same amount of film. You see, it's a bigger diameter going on a smaller diameter. So as we're winding our film in a 120 camera, that winding mechanism, that counting mechanism is continuously... Uh, adapting, it's changing its amount of travel so that it adjusts for the big spool going on to the little spool and that sequence changes, that, that situation changes. We go from our film, unexposed film, becomes the little spool toward the end of the roll and the take up spool becomes the bigger one. So as we wind through the roll of film, regardless of what kind of 120 camera it is, as we wind through the film, um, the, the, the mechanism in the camera has to adjust for that changing of diameters. Okay, that's gonna get important here in just a minute. All right, so now I'm on number seven. Don't go all the way back in. Take the picture. We're on number eight. Now we're number nine. Now the next one, what's gonna happen is when I go to 10, it just engages a little lever up here at the top. Now when I take number 10, it shouldn't let me wind it again. No, it doesn't. What I have to do is I have to push up on this little thing, this little button at the top. That's going to tell me then that I have gone, that I've run out of film and that I need to wind it on, okay? Now I'm at load. Now what I can do now, after I just went past number 10, is I can even do a little partial winds again to make sure that I wound my film onto the take-up spool. Now when I take this off, the film is all going to be on the take-up spool and my sequencing was all correct. There it is there. What we do not want to do on a Kony Omega rangefinder is in the middle of the roll, do a partial pull and push it back in. Because if we do that, we just messed up our sequencing. You can, you can finish the roll, but you may end up with goofy spaces in there because what you've done is you've done a partial um, part of that adjustment where it's changing those spool diameters or adjusting for those spool diameters. And if you only go part way and push it back in and you don't hit the counter, you just wound some of the film on. You just change that diameter of those spools without the counter knowing, you see. So you don't really want to do that. There's been several times over the years where I've taken this camera out of a backpack or something and I'll snag this lever on the, the side of the backpack and I'll pull it part way as I pull the camera out of the back. What you really want to do is go ahead and finish that pull so it hits the counter, shove it back in. Yes, you'll end up with a blank frame, but it's sequenced correctly for the rest of the roll. So you never want to do a partial wind because this is not an additive winder. It's not like old Nikon where you can do little little third winds and when it gets to the end, it's, it's done. It doesn't do that. If I sit here and do this on this winder, it will roll the entire roll of film through the camera and never once hit the counter. So we don't want to do that. The only time you want to do that is when we're loading it to the start mark that we always want to go to the end, okay? So that's how to load a Kony Omega range winder. It's a little bit goofy. Use partial pulls at the beginning to line up the arrows when the counter says load, put it on back on the camera, lock it on, and then always do a full pull and all the way back again. And you'll find it works pretty good. The sequencing, the spacing on this camera isn't perfect. 
Um, I, like I said, I have two of these bodies. I think they both do the same thing. The first exposure, like number one and number two, will be sort of butted up against each other. I never have a problem with printing them. You know, you just kind of realize it's going to do that. And they don't really overlap, but they, they butt together. The rest of the roll sequence is exactly right. So loading a Coney Omega rangefinder. And like I said, the other ones that had the, the whole removable back assembly that you can do mid-roll, I think they work exactly the same way. It's basically the same back. It's just put on a different uh, insert that goes into the camera uh, using a dark slide so you can block it out. I kind of like these simpler ones better because uh, less light seals and things to, to go bad on them. All right, that's how to load the Coney Omega. Any questions or comments or anything, leave them below. Uh, and I've done a lot of photographs through this camera. Maybe if I get into doing some camera sort of review videos again, we'll, we'll do one about this camera. I do have the other couple of lenses for this, the wide angle, the 58, and the uh, 180 telephoto. This is the 90 normal lens that's on here as well. So anyway, uh, so watch this video a couple times if you need to, if you're loading one of these, and, and kind of get that sequence down how to do it. Alrighty, I'll see you in the next video.